Here's another of the Morley two-part Fantasias. This is Il Lamento, and in this case it's been transposed for two bass vials. And we are going to look at part one of the two. And the very first thing that we need to think about is the speed. Um, because it's pretty crucial for the length of our first note. If we're too slow, we are going to run out of bow. Um, but if it's too quick, you lamento, we're going to struggle, aren't we, to, to give that feeling. So I wonder whether we might look at um, maybe bar 14, 15, 16, with some bits that move, just to give us an idea of the speed. <laughs> sound kind of reasonable. Right at the beginning, I think I would start this on a fourth finger, on a stop to A, because I just think it's going to be much easier to make a smooth line down to the G sharp and back up again. It's just a bit safer than changing string. I think the attention is going to be in the other part, in part two. They've got something much more interesting to say than our line, which just kind of hangs around at the beginning. Let's try it, starting on a four. Let's start right at the tip of the bow. Really, really relaxed bowing arm. We're going to start. I don't think we need to do an enormous crescendo through that first note, but we might just warm it up a little bit as we go. Here we go. Three, four, one, two, three, Shall we stop there in a second? So we started with a four. We just warmed that note up a little bit in the middle. So by moving ever so slightly nearer the bridge with the bow, adding just a bit of weight with the, the finger that's on the hair in the middle, starting with lots of support from your ring finger, just taking it off as the note gets going and bringing it back again at the end. It's got to start just turning around before you play the G sharp. And then unusually I would go for your fourth finger again, even though it's on the way up. I think it's a bit much to have started there and then end up on an open string. So I would actually play a four for both of those. You've got to watch in the second, third bar that your four it needs to stay down as you cross the string, but you've got to keep it out of the way of the A string. If your fourth finger is slightly lazy, it'll get in the way when you play the B on the A string. So make sure you're right on the tip of your fourth finger. So it can stay down as you cross over. top on the octave leap and it's on one at the bottom you need your one again don't you for the C sharp and that's fine but then stay there so you're now in half position and you're keeping your second finger on the D and then I would one two four because of the octave here from the top, right at the tip, very, very, very relaxed bowing on. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Warm it up a bit, relax.
Just a couple of other things to think about in there. I think the whole of the first four bars is one great long crescendo up to the D at the end of bar four, tied over into bar five. So this first note, even if it blooms a little bit, I don't think it needs to go too far. High D, we've got loads of bow. And relax onto that one. There's time, isn't this? Cross the string here. Hold the four down. It'll buy you some time with the bow, but don't be in a rush. This is growing, isn't it? As it rises in pitch. I think is tiny. You've got to that top A. Just touch the bottom, bottom crotchet and ping straight back up again. Leave your finger on it at the bottom. So it's nice and resonant but it doesn't need to be big. I don't think you need to clobber that one with the bow at the bottom. Going on, how about an open string in bar 9? And these three minutes lead into bar 10 so we'll use more bow per minute. And Starting on a back bow in nine. Each of those minims just growing a bit. I think it's nice if they're not really smooth. I think um, I just find that a bit much. And if you look at the other part in nine, they've got interesting things that they're knitting. I think it's unhelpful if your sound is too solid. So I'm just making I think they're getting longer but I think the first one in particular has a real it's a kind of saucer shape with the with the bow. I'm making sure that the string is going but then once it's going I'm taking all the weight off and just allowing the bow to float over the string. So I get it, get it to speak cleanly, not with a, not with a bite at the beginning, just enough to really kind of coax the string into action. And then the bow just floats over the top. So the, the tail end of that minim is a very um, wispy one. position because of the F natural and the D that's coming up and I'm just letting that fall away a bit so plenty of contact this finger on the on the hair really playing the E string in the beginning of bar 10 and really relaxing as it falls away there's a really um sorrowful fall to that isn't there you lamento extra finger and a little bit more bow in here. You need, um, I think you need a one at the beginning of 12 so that you can get up here. Unless you fancy an open string, I mean it's possible isn't it? It's very bright on this vial and I just, I think, I think I prefer the covered sounds. Which means you have to You've got to play the C sharp with a 1 and then the D with a 1, the end of 11 into 12. I think what you can't do is play the D before it with a 1 and the C sharp with a 1 and the next D with a 1. That's known as the first finger wiggle um, and is generally best avoided. So if you're going to do it, um, let's be in half position at the end of 11 with a 2 on the bottom A. But um, chordal finger this, so 3 on the D, 1 on the C sharp. 
and then move the one up. I think that's allowable to get you a nice four at the top of here. But the other problem is the bowing. Um, you have to be on a bowing bow on the second minimum of 12. I think it's partly to do with just arranging yourself in 11 so that you've got plenty of bow left. The first note of 12 comes out on a bag. Don't use too much of it. There's plenty of time in the string cross to just sort yourself out, but you do need to start the second minimum of 12 on a back bow. And I prefer the fourth finger, but go for the top string if, if you'd rather. This is nine coming up, and we're going for those slightly saucer shape with the bow. Get the string speaking, but as soon as it's going, then you're just floating across the top. This is nine and one. should have done at the end of 15 I think you want one two four for the start of 16 fingering wise so you're in half position but at the end of 15 the last two notes one two four then we've got a bowing um, thing I think it's a bit of a shame for all of the quavers to come out the wrong way round which is what's going to happen if we bow it straight through I would do two forward bows in a row here it's a little bit awkward but because there's a big string cross on the octave leap I think it's fine. So the end of 15, you finish on a forward bow on the first note of 16. I think there's time to kind of restart for the quavers. I don't think it needs a big retake. You don't need to, to pick up the bow and, and shoot all the way back to the tip and make a big thing of it. But I think you can just start those quavers on a new forward bow. So it'll be two forward bows in a row at the start of 16. We're nicely in first position. And I'd play a, a, a four on the start of 17, even though you're about to carry on on the A string. The first note of 17 is the end of that. So uh, if you play an open string, it's going to stick out. So just look after the first crotchet of 17, play it with a full finger, and then... You can change string for the new thing that starts in 17. Let's go from 14 after the crotchet rest. 14, it'll be a back bow, open A string. One and two and three. Get what I'm going to say. So this is 19. You've got a string to miss out, haven't you? If you play an open A, you've got to get down to that D without catching the E string on the way. I think. 
because the A is an upbeat, it's really light with the bow, you've got time to get across that string. That was an exaggeration that had too much delay in it, but you see what I mean about you can kind of leave that note hanging while you find your way down here. There's no rush in there and they do not need to join, so you don't need to play it as though you wish they could be smooth. If you want them smooth, play it with a four. But I think it's fine. A little tiny bit of lift. Make sure your two stays on the D. Here. And I think there's a real sense of strong weak at the start of 21 here. Strong weak. Bow it straight through, forward bow. Chordal finger in there at the end of 21, two on the G, three on the C. And the same here, two on the G. And that final D, very gentle. This is more just a really weak, weak one on the third beat of 24. Let's go from 19 and one. So this is from the last minimum of 24. There's some fingering decisions to make in here and there are several options. You need to try a few out and see what you think. So you could play this in half position, couldn't you? Two on the D. Fits nicely in half position. The problem is that top A, it's a long way and it's a tiny note. It really runs the risk of sticking out if you can't play it on a four. If you're going to play it on a four, you need to have had a one at the end of 25. So the F also needs to have been a four. Does that make sense? If you're in half position in 25, you're really going to need to play an open string at the start of 26. That's fine, but it's risky because it might stick out. If you want to avoid the risk, start 25 on a one. And play one, three, four, so the F is on the C string. And there's your octave nicely. You can bar the one across to the D. You could actually stay in this position. Three, four, two for the G. So every F in that section would then be on a fourth finger, every E would be a third finger rather than an open string. It sits really nicely. And um, the reason that, that you might not do it is that the F on the C string tends to just not be quite such a good sound as the F that's in half position on the E string. You've got to you've got to decide which is which is better. Do you mind? And um, is it a massive difference on your viol? The difference is bigger on some than it is on others. How important are those Fs? Does it matter if they've got that slightly more covered sound? If you play the whole thing in half position from twenty five, you get a slightly more open sound because of the open E's, better quality F. That is a bit of a risk, it's, it makes it further to go for the octave lead with the risk of that top one sticking out. But this fits nicely, 
second finger on the A, third on the D. Then you could do two, four to bring the octave out. You could stay in half position again, actually. You could put two on the D. And again, it's a slightly more open sound than that. Personal taste. Choose one, try them both out and just, just make some decisions and write them in. Whatever you do, I would play, um, this is 27, I would play the E on the C string at the start of the quavers. Whatever position you're in at the start of 27, play the E on the C string. If you're here, you'll do that automatically. And again, whatever position you've been in, you have to have a 1 on the bottom A in 27. So that you've got your fourth finger left at the start of 28. Just try out the various options in there. So essentially, you can play that section in first position using the E and the F on the C string. Or you can play it in half position using open E string and F back here on the, on the E string. Slightly more string crossing and you just need to watch out for some of the octave leaps, it puts them further away. Try them, see what you think. Let's go together from the end of 24 with whichever fingering you've settled on. Last minimum of 24 is going to be a back bow. One, two, three, four, one. about 28, 29 as well, don't you? Are you going to stay in first position, play all the Fs up here still? I didn't. I went, um, I was in, I had a fourth finger at the start of 28, so the bottom D was a one, and I shifted into half position. And stayed there. It's not all is it that in half position there's not loads of string crossing I think it's fine and, and I personally do prefer that slightly open and more open sound of open E string and, and, and first finger F but take your pick again experiment decide write it in and then do it um, bar 30 I really would stop the second E rather than windmilling across the strings. Should we do that once more? This is the end of 24. The end of 24 with whatever fingering you've picked. Do, do try out a few and um, just decide. Write them in. There's, there's nothing worse than knowing that there are options and then every time you get there thinking, oh this was the bar where I could have done this or I could have done that. And then you end up just not quite playing anything because you're halfway between one position and the other because you didn't quite decide in advance. So just choose. Write it in and then do what you've decided. End of 24. Two, three, four, one. That last bit's all right, isn't it? I think I started on a four in 31. 
just slightly lifting them in. So I'm just getting the string going and then letting the bow float. So it never stops and it's never completely silent. It's just that by the end of it, it really is just floating. So it's got that slight lift. When you start the A, you're properly connected to the string again. So it has that feeling of lifted upbeat without being kind of lively or short. position at the end of 34 on the quavers. I'm right at the tip of the bow, going to use um, the top what, quarter for the quavers, enough to get them to speak clearly, cleanly, smoothly, but without being too um, out of control. So we're half position at the end of 34. It just all sits there, doesn't it? Keep the D down there. And then I would stop the E here. I shifted and went used to three just because I'm lazy with my forefinger. If you stay in half position, a four is fine. Again, I just wouldn't come back to the open E string. Let's go from 31, back bow, that slightly lifted minim, and one. This is just part one for a minute. Here we go. Three, four, one, two, three,
you're on your own on the top part then I will put part two in for you I'm going to need to count in because you start but then I keep the speed moving in the first bar I will try and do that in a way that means you're not going to run out of bow see you at the end three four mm. 